reading from Genesis. That same night, Jacob got up, took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip side, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then the man said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, and he went on his way, limping. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
men and women often pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me, for my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall not God avenge his own elect to cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them with speed. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. wrestling 
with God. My hunch is that something will be going radically wrong in your life, and you will have awakened in the middle of the night. Your wrestling may not be as physically intense as Jacob's was, but you'll find yourself tossing, turning, staring at the ceiling, unable to sleep. Jacob was running from something. Perhaps you'll be too. His problem was his brother Esau, who he had cheated out of a sizable inheritance, but who not wanted to meet. Jacob worried. How will this meeting go? Will his brother try to kill him? He can't envision it being pleasant. And so his sleep is troubled. I know a guy who was part of a scheme that everybody inside this church knows about, but those outside don't, but he tried to pull some financial shenanigans with us. Literally, cheat us out of a substantial amount of money. Here's the funny thing. For all practical purposes, he has entered the Federal Witness Protection Program. I used to see him at concerts and plays and recitals, but no more. He is a persona non grata. I haven't seen him in months. Honestly, I would hate to be him, wondering if somehow Pastor Nelson is going to turn up somewhere and that there'll be a confrontation. That's exactly the problem that Jacob was wrestling with. Will there be a confrontation between him and his brother? And what it is clear to me is that before he can confront his brother, he has to confront God. He has to do a little wrestling with God over what he has done and how to make it right. So God comes to him in the middle of the night. Some believe in the form of an angel. And they wrestle all night long. There is nothing staged here. It is soul-to-soul -soul wrestling that eventually leads Jacob with not only a blessing, but a win. Wrestling with God is really a matter of who's going to control who. Who's going to control what? If you're in a knockdown, drag out wrestling match with God, it's probably over a matter of who controls life. And the only way to win with God is to surrender. I think that's also the point of Jesus' parable today. As you know, in every one of Jesus' parables, there is a character who represents God, and then there is a character who represents us. This week, as I read for the sermon, even the most creative scholars were flummoxed by this little story. Yes, Jesus is talking about our need to pray constantly. But can God be cast in the role of an unjust judge? It's fun to see brilliant minds wrestle with this and come up empty. I owe my revelation to a sermon preached many years ago by William F. Marbury, the senior pastor of Central United Methodist Church in Florence, North Carolina, who observed this. Our tendency is to align God with the powerful, 
the one able to grant justice, or not, as the case may be. In other words, the judge. But then, Alambre goes on to wonder, is God more like the formerly unyielding judge, or the persistent, tireless widow who seeks out justice until it is achieved. In my life, God has always been more like the widow than the judge. God is always sneaking up behind me at just the right time the right time for God, that is, not particularly for me, and said, Dave, we need to talk about what we're doing. Waiting at the stoplight, there is the voice of God in my ear that is asking, did you really mean to do that? Getting the mail, working out at the health club, Yes, sometimes even in church, God is like the widow and reminds me that I haven't always been just or calm. And those moments are like a wrestling match because my temptation is to say, yeah, yeah, God, I, I know, but, but don't you see? Or, God, I, I know, but the, the reason I did that was because they did this. You know exactly what I'm saying. You and I are great at giving God excuses, but God keeps coming back and coming back and coming back until we are ready to wrestle with Him over the big issues of our lives. God is not only willing to will us out until we are ready to listen. But to go as far as what one translation has the judge saying about the widow. If I don't grant her justice, I'm going to end up being beaten black and blue by her power. I'm not so sure that God's intention for us is to have us be black and blue. But I'm sure that I have seen a lot of people do that all by themselves when they have tried to wrestle with their problems all on their own. So if your life is like one giant episode of and problems are flying at you from every angle and every corner. If you are beaten and bruised trying to handle your life all by yourself, perhaps the solution, the solution is to stop wrestling with God and let Him have control of your life. You may come away from the encounter like Jacob, humble, but humble. But you will receive what God gave him. Not only a limp, but a blessing. And what God gave both the judge and the woman, a fresh start. But this time you'll know that amid all the tussles and turmoils of life, God is at your side. One way or another, God is going to lead you. And really not. Would you want to have it any other way? Thanks for listening.
eternal, immortal, invisible, the God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.